You were created to know and enjoy God. You were called to be in community so that you can become all that God desires you to be. God designed you with a purpose so you can be the difference in this world. And we exist to help you on that journey. Graceway. Hey, Graceway, I'm Pastor Andrew Dudu. Thank you so much for joining us as we kick off a new series called Game Changer. No matter where you're watching us from today, if you're looking for a way that you can dip in your relationship with Jesus and discover how you can make a difference in your community, I want to invite you to Grow Track today at 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. online. Grow Track is the simplest way to get connected with what God is doing at Graceway. Take out your phone and go to visitgraceway.org slash growtrack to get registered. Before we get started, take a moment and click the subscribe or follow button so you can keep up with what is happening at Graceway. Let's get things started with Graceway Collective.
Good morning, Graceway. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. I hope that you had an awesome Christmas. And can you believe that 2020 is almost over? Four more days and we close out this year. One of the things I like to do at the end of each year is, is go back and review what the year has been like. And I ended up skipping over parts of 2020 so that I could get back into 2019. And I got into my calendar looking at December of 2019, a year ago right now. And as I look back over it, it was, it was a pretty routine December. I was coming up on a new year and I was doing all the things that I normally do. If you're like me, you sit down, you write out your goals, you put out all the important dates on the calendar. You know, you're planning vacations and looking at the holidays. And I remember looking at 21 days of prayer coming up in January. And, you know, as I think about that, I had no idea what was coming. How could we know what was coming? It was a routine December, getting ready for a routine year, thinking that I was going to run the same plays that I had run the last year, but I was wrong. Little did I know that I would be trying to stockpile toilet paper or that I would be homeschooling my kids for an entire school year. I didn't know that I'd be canceling those vacations that I planned and canceling the holidays with family that I'd planned. I didn't expect to watch graduations and weddings online. I wasn't ready to bury my friend and have only nine people able to attend his funeral. It was a hard year. And there were times that I felt like I was in this out of control free fall. And during that time, I read a book by a guy named General William McRaven. General McRaven was a Navy commander, and he wasn't just any Navy commander. He was the commander of the U.S. Navy SEALs. And in his book, he tells this story about getting ready for a routine training mission, much the same way we got ready for 2020. It was pretty routine. And they were going to get on an airplane. They were going to go up to a certain altitude, and all the SEALs would jump out and deploy their parachutes and then land safely on the ground. And General Craven talks about how they did that. They loaded their gear. They got on the airplane. They started flying up to altitude. When they got to the right altitude, they stood up, lined up, got in front of the door. The door opened. The jump master said, go. And they started jumping out one after the other, just like they had always done countless times. And General Craven talks about how he's free falling over this beautiful California desert. And he's enjoying the free fall right up to the point that he notices a dot appear directly between him and the ground. And he looks down and realizes there's another seal right below him that had just pulled the ripcord on their parachute. And when that happened, a little parachute comes out that grabs hold of the air and then pulls the main chute out. And General Craven knew that if he didn't take action immediately, he may not live to tell about it because if that main chute opened and he plowed into it at over 100 miles an hour, it would likely kill him. And when I look at this story, it reminds me a little bit of 2020. There was this sickness way off in the distance all the way in another continent that we could see but really didn't think anything was going to make it to us. And so we made some pivots and changes not wanting to, to have contact with that. And that's not the way it worked out. And it's not the way it worked out for General McRaven either. That main chute ended up deploying. General McRaven smashed right into it. And it sent him bouncing through the air, end over end, completely out of control, plummeting towards Earth really fast. That's starting to sound like 2020 to me. We didn't crash into a parachute. We crashed into a pandemic. And we're still reeling from it. And it sent us stepping back into trying to rely on the basics of life. That's what's allowed us to survive this entire year is what it feels like. And General McRaven, he had to rely on his basic training as well, which told him when you're flying through the air, you need to pull your ripcord and deploy your parachute so that you can land safely. And so that's what he did. He reached up, he pulled his ripcord. And when he did, because he was going end over end, when that parachute came out, the ropes wrapped around his legs. And so now he's still headed towards earth upside down with a parachute right side up that's wrapped around his legs. Is that starting to sound more like 2020? That seems like it's about the time that we had riots and wildfires and crazy elections, and then the murder hornet showed up in the middle of a pandemic. What else could happen? Well, much like 2020, things got worse for General McRaven because his chute did deploy, and since those ropes were wrapped around his legs, it took his legs with the parachute. It broke bones, it separated muscle, it tore tendons. It literally was trying to tear him limb from limb. And while he tried to stay conscious through the pain, he realized this 
is not a good situation. Now I'm upside down, broken, and still headed towards earth. Now that sounds like 2020 to me. Just when you think it couldn't get worse, it got a whole lot worse, and it feels like you might be broken from it. The good news is General McCaven, he did land in the desert. He landed two miles from where he was supposed to be. He was literally broken from head to toe, but he went through numerous surgeries, went through long recovery times, but was able to continue to stay in the Navy, continue to be able to lead, went on to retire as a four-star admiral. And I hope that the ending of General McRaven's story is very similar to what we're about to walk into coming into 2021. And it reminds me of this really helpful verse in Proverbs 19, verses 21. This says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. See, we make plans, and thankfully, God's purposes prevail. So if you're like me, you're planning for 2021 a little different than you planned for 2020. I don't want to run the same plans in 21 that I ran this past year. When I look back at 2020, I feel like in a lot of ways we, we survived. And for me, I feel like the, the things that allowed me to survive, really the relationships that allowed me to survive 2020 are the same relationships that will allow you to thrive in this upcoming year. And so today I'd like to teach you how to thrive in the coming year by investing in relationships. And the first relationship that you have to invest in is your relationship with God. Now, of course, you'd expect a pastor to stand up here and say, after a year like we've had, of course, God is the number one thing that you should invest your life into. And it's true. So I'm saying it. And I know that there's some of you that you don't have a relationship with God and it doesn't really mean anything to you that I'm telling you, hey, you need to invest in this. But I do want to look at what does it mean to invest in a relationship with God? And it's similar to any other relationship. You have to spend time. You have to communicate. That means you have to talk and you have to listen. And I want to tell you that my relationship with God gives me the foundation that I need every day to be able to face whatever challenges are going to come at me during that day. And growing in our relationship with God is simpler than you think. So let's start with, with one of the first things that you need to do to be able to grow in your relationship with God, because knowing God is closely tied to obeying God. And one of the first things that God asks us to do, tells us to do whenever you become a follower of him, is to get baptized. So baptism is that first thing. Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, some of us haven't planted that seed of obedience inside our heart yet, and God wants that seed of obedience so that he can grow fruit from it. If, if you're interested in being baptized, if you want to know more about baptism, you can call the number on your screen. We have pastors waiting to talk to you. You can ask questions. You can get signed up for baptism. You can go to our website and sign up to be baptized as well. We have people just waiting for COVID to end so they can get here and be baptized, and we'll find a way for you to get baptized. We want you to be able to take that step because I want to see you grow in that relationship with God, especially as you come into this coming year. The next thing that we're going to talk about is read your Bible. Okay, this is God's word given to us. And when you read your Bible, you can have a deeper experience than you can even imagine. I, I can hardly even explain it to you because as you read this, it reads you. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of our soul and our spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that's saying that God's word is living and active, and it discerns the thoughts and the intentions of my heart and yours. Okay, It's a living thing that we get to interact with and deepen our relationship with God. The Bible also has so much guidance in it. I need so much guidance. I need lots of help. So whenever I get in here, I learn about how to have a better marriage, how to be a better parent. I've learned about business, leadership, money, finances, it just goes on and on, okay? We need guidance, we need help, and you can find it all right here. One of the biggest things that I've learned here is wise living. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. We need wisdom. Let's find it. One of the ways you can find it is by getting into his word. And I want to give you three ways 
that'll help you get into his word. If you already have those rhythms, I think these three things are gonna help you or solidify what you're already doing. And if you don't already have these rhythms, I know that these are gonna help you. The three things are you need to find a place, you need to find a plan, and find a partner. So find a place. When you find a place, that means you find a place that you can go and be alone, that you can not be distracted, that it can be still and quiet so that you can read and understand and hear from God. Now, if your house is anything like mine, that means that I'm either getting up earlier than everybody else, staying up later than everybody else, or I'm having to go outside, outside of my home to find that peace and quiet so that I can interact with God. Whatever it is, find your spot. Okay, I've got this chair in my room that I'd love to sit in. That is my spot where I can sit there with a nice hot drink and I can read or listen to my Bible. And that's, it's special to me. Find that place. It might be, it might be in your car. It might be outside. It might be riding the bus to school or to work. Okay, it might be in your bedroom. I don't know where it is, but you've got to find it and make it yours. Okay, so you found a place. Next thing you have to do is you got to find a plan. Now, I use the Bible app. It's a free app that you can get on any of your devices. It has so many Bible plans, all kinds of Bible plans. Anything that you're going through in life, you can find a plan that's built around that. It doesn't have to be that you conquer the entire Bible in one plan or in one year. Find what works for you, connect with it, and start using it. Now, the third thing we're going to talk about is find a partner. Pastor Tim and I, we partner in reading the Bible and reading the same plan every year. And that plan takes us through the entire Bible in one year. And when we're in that plan, it provides discussion times for us because we're both reading the same thing on the same day. So there's times we might get to the office or we might be on a phone call and we'll just bring up something that we talked about. Okay, it also provides accountability. So Pastor Tim can see if I read my Bible that day or he can see if it's been four or five days since I've read my Bible and he can check in and be like, hey, John, you doing okay? What's going on? I see you haven't read anything. Okay, it provides great discussions, great accountability. And I wanna encourage you, read it every day. Get into it every day. Don't, don't read it just to cover that ground. Don't read it just to check the box that I read in my Bible. Read it to understand it. Read it to connect with God. Okay, it's his word and it's a gift to us. And we've already read that it's, it's living, it's active. It discerns your heart and it will speak to you, I promise. The other way that we connect with God is, is not just through reading, but it's through prayer. And I have to tell you, prayer, prayer has changed my life. More than anything else, prayer has changed my life. My most comforting, my most encouraging, my most peaceful times have been in times of prayer. And I can also tell you that the most visceral, intense, moving times I've ever experienced have been in my time with God. And prayer is literally talking and listening. Okay, it's not having to sit and chant or read something specific. It's really just spending time with God and communicating. We talked about those important relationships that we have and communication is key in those things. So to build that communication line with God, we have to take the time to do it. Okay, we have to sit, talk, listen. You think about the important relationships in your your life. Maybe it's your friends, maybe it's your family, um, your, your spouse, your children. Think about if you spent the same amount of time talking to them that you did to God, with God, what that, what that relationship would be like. What if you talk to them the same way you talk to God? How would that relationship be? Because you know, communication is one of the, the best ways we experience people. We get to learn about each other. We get to give and receive information. It's, a, it's probably one of the most enjoyable aspects of being in a relationship with someone is being able to communicate with them and understand them and have them understand you. And the relationship that we have with God is no different. Okay, God wants us to talk to him and he has things that he wants to say to us. Which means when we get into that time of prayer, it's not, it's not just, just talking to him. It's not just listening to him. It's understanding too. And I would tell you, prayer is similar to reading your Bible. You're gonna need to find a place. Okay, it doesn't mean that you have to get locked in a closet. Now I can tell you when I'm driving on I-70 in my car, I am praying a lot. Okay, that's a different type of prayer. When you really want to get to know God, understand him and have him understand you, you got to find a place that you can be alone, that you're not going to be distracted, that you can interact with him. One of the other things I would tell you is, is get a journal. Get a journal. Okay, use some sort of paper and a pen or a pencil 
so that you can write things down. I used to use my phone, I used to use a tablet, and I don't do that anymore, they're too distracting. Okay, even if you shut off the notifications, for me, whenever I open it up, I still see all these apps and things happening, and I just can't do it. So I have a journal that I use, and that journal is dedicated strictly to spiritual things. It's not, it's not my memories, it's not business stuff, it's not family stuff, it's, it's strictly dedicated to my time with Jesus. And I would encourage you, do the same, Find a journal you can write things down in. And when you start writing things down, I would say start with what you're thankful for. Let that be the first thing that you put on your list. Here's the things I'm thankful for, God. And that list is going to grow long. I'm going to tell you, as you start to develop a list of things you're thankful for, you find more and more things that you're thankful for and you want to thank God for. The next thing I would tell you to put on a following page somewhere is write your needs down. Write your needs down. Really think about them and write them down. On another page, write down the needs of other people, things that you can bring to God on behalf of them. And so if you're wondering, how do I start even praying to God? How, what does this time look like? Well, you find your spot, you get your journal, you write some things that you're thankful for, and then you speak them to God. God, thank you for my house. Thank you that I have heat and running water and electricity right now. Thank you for the family you've given me. Thank you for the life that I have. Thank you for this great church I get to be a part of. Start with the things you're thankful for. Write your needs down. Write the needs down of other people. And then bring those to God. If that's that's too hard to wrap your head around, get ready for 21 days of prayer. It's coming here in January. And we'll actually have a prayer journal that you can pick up a hard copy or even download online. It'll walk you through prayers. It'll create areas in there that you can go ahead and start writing these things down. You don't have to go buy a journal. We're going to give one to you. And for 21 days, every day, our church is going to pray together. We've been doing this for a few years now, and it's amazing. It will change your life. Prayer will change your life. I can't tell you that enough. It has been the single most thing in my relationship with God that has, has done more for me than anything else. So when you enter into that time of prayer, Enter in with, with, the, with the intention to grow, with the intention to understand God and be in communication and hear from him. And time is the key factor here. Time is probably the key factor in any relationship we have, especially with God. And so I'd ask you and probably just challenge you, look at the discretionary time you have during the day. What do you, what do you spend your time? Is it social media, Netflix, gaming? I don't know what it is, but look at it. Okay, if it's on your phone, you can pull up your phone and see how much screen time you have every day. And let's just say you spend two hours. I would say, just like your finances, take 10% of that discretionary time and give it to God in prayer. If you spend two hours just doing stuff, okay, social media, Netflix, whatever it is, take 10% of that. It's 12 minutes. Give 12 minutes to God, and I guarantee you he's going to change your life. I guarantee he will take 10% of that discretionary time, and he's going to do things so amazing that you can't even fathom it right now. I couldn't. Here's the next part. In that time with God, you're writing things down, you're presenting them to him. Have that journal so that you can listen. That's the next thing. You got to listen to God. He's going to talk to you. Okay, think about those relationships. If you spent the whole time talking, there's no room for the relationship to grow. You got to listen to the, the person on the other side. God has things he wants to share with you. And if you're not listening, you're not going to hear it. You say, I don't even know what that means to listen to God. I, trust me, just be quiet in that prayer time and listen to him. Something will come to your mind. Something will move in your heart or your spirit. Write it down. As crazy as it sounds, write it down. You say, man, I don't even know what God's voice sounds like. I understand that. Just trust me and write it down. Bring out the journal because God's talking to you. And as you continue to spend time with him day after day, you might end up seeing the same things written down and you'll realize this is what God's saying to me. And you will know God's voice. John chapter 10, verse 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You'll know the voice of the shepherd. I actually watched a video on this of people testing this theory that sheep will only respond to the voice of their shepherd. And they took a a shepherd and five other people. And the shepherd taught those five other people how to call his sheep. He taught them the words, the volume, the voice inflection. And then they took these five people, and one by one, they took them out to where the flock of sheep was. They said, go. And they filmed the sheep. And person number one does the call. 
the sheep don't even move, right? They end up going through numbers two, three, four, and five. The sheep don't even blink. They're just out there munching grass. Like they don't even lift their heads and look. Okay, so they, they send the shepherd out and he doesn't go far. He just goes to the edge of the field and he puts his hands up and he does this call. All the sheep stop, lift their heads and they look right at him. He does his call one more time and the sheep come running to him. And these other people, they're still out there and all the sheep run to the shepherd and surround him. They're excited to see him. That's the way our prayer time is. As you spend more time with the shepherd, you're going to know his voice. Okay? The sheep come running to him because they see him daily. They hear him daily because he's out there all the time with them. And what does the shepherd do? He protects them. He supplies their needs. He takes care of them. That's what God does for us. Okay? You will know the voice of the shepherd. You will know it. And the more time you spend with him on a daily basis, the more clear and the louder that voice will become. Okay? It will become more recognizable. This is why in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, Paul tells us, pray without ceasing. Pray continually. Don't stop. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go sit in your closet and chant over and over and over again to be able to pray without ceasing. It means that this is a, it's a conversation that goes on throughout the day that really doesn't have a beginning or an end. Okay? It's talking and listening with God all day. That's praying without ceasing. As you get to understand his voice and know his voice, you'll hear it throughout the day. And there's things that will come up that you can share with him throughout the day, and you'll be able to hear back from him just like if you and I were sitting and talking. I want that for you. I want that to be a continual conversation for you. See, it's not not an event. It's not something you just put on the calendar and you make happen. Okay, It's it's not an obligation. It's an opportunity to connect with God. It's an opportunity to connect with your creator. Okay, He knows you. He has great things for you. He loves you, and he wants to spend time with you. And I promise, whenever you reach out to him, he will be there. He will be there for you. If we look at Jeremiah 29, verse 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So God tells you, when you seek me, when you come to me, I'll be there. And I think that we have to consider, what does it mean to truly pray wholeheartedly? What does it mean to wholeheartedly seek after God? Because when we wholeheartedly seek after him, he says he'll be there. When you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. So I'd tell you, sit down with that journal, find a place, find a time, and start investing in that relationship with God, reading his word, and listening to him. The relationship that you can develop with him is beyond anything I can even explain to you. You've experienced things in your life that you can't explain. You can talk about it as much as you want, but until you live it, you just can't understand it. And that's the way I feel about this. I want it so badly for you. I want you to experience what a close walk with Jesus is like daily. You know, I've, I can't explain to you what it's like to see a, my child born. You have to experience that. You, you can't explain nature to somebody. You have to be in there and experience it. Or maybe there's been a time that you experienced music in such a way that you just felt it. You can't explain that to somebody. Just like I can't explain to you what it's like to have a close relationship with God, I want you to experience it. These are the things you need to do to get started on that path to be able to experience it. John chapter 15 verses 4 through 5 says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If you want to thrive in the coming year, you've got to invest in that relationship with God. Now, that's not the only relationship you have to invest in. Okay, if you want to thrive in the coming year, the next relationship you have to invest in is your friendships. Okay, we need friends. God built us to be in relationship with other people. He didn't build us to be alone. That started back in Genesis. He realized it is not good for Adam to be alone. And he he brought Eve into the picture. Okay, it's not good for us to be alone. Some of you live 2020 alone. I've talked to you. I've met you. It almost killed you, literally. The pandemic didn't kill you. The isolation did. 
we need people. You need people you can lean on. You need people that can lean on you. It's a mutual thing that happens here, and God made us that way. He designed us that way. But you got to be careful of who you bring into that circle of relationship with you. Jim Rohn tells us that we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So the five people that are closest to you, if I take an average of them, it tells me a lot about you. And that tells me that we need to choose our friends wisely. We need to choose our team, our crew wisely. Okay, you need to consider what type of people you're spending time around. You might say, I don't have any friends to spend time with. Okay, well, you need to figure out what type of people you do want to be around. And so I'd tell you, make a list. This is what I want in a friend. Here are the attributes, okay? Not a list of who I want to be friends with. Figure out what you want in a friend first. And then whenever you meet those people, whenever you connect with them, whenever you find them, you can reach out to them, okay? You've heard Pastor Tim talk about this for the last two weeks where he says, go first, lean in, take a step. That's what you're gonna have to do. When you meet those people, get in a conversation with them and just ask them to coffee. Hey, could I buy you coffee? Could I buy you lunch? That's leaning in, that's going first. That's taking a step towards them and giving them an opportunity to step back towards you. And that seems like a scary thing sometimes because rejection could happen, but I bet it won't. That person is probably looking for a friend just like you are, and either they don't know how to do it or they're too scared. So lean in, take a step towards them. I did this recently. There's a guy that I had met. We were on several phone calls together, all business stuff. And through that time, I got to know him a little bit better on the business side. And I thought, huh, this guy's interesting. Uh, I wonder if there's a friendship possibility here. So at the close of one of our calls, I said, hey man, can we just shift gears for a moment? He said, sure. What's going on? I said, well, you know, I've enjoyed getting to know you on the business side of things, but I'd really love to get to know you outside of business. Could I buy coffee or lunch sometime and we just sit and talk? And the line went silent for an uncomfortably long period of time. You know, one of those things where seconds start feeling like minutes and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, he's probably trying to figure out a nice way to say no, (laughs) but he didn't. He comes back on. He says, please forgive me for taking so long. And, and he's talking in this shaky voice, obviously full of emotion. He said, I'm not accustomed to. Actually, John, never has anyone asked to just sit and talk with me about anything except for what I do in business. And I was caught off guard. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what that looks like to sit and talk with someone when we don't discuss business, but I'd love to try. Thank you for asking me no rejection. He wants friends. And it literally had never had someone ask him to just sit and talk, to create a relationship outside of work. You can do this. Okay. Here's, here's the key lesson right here. Vulnerability breeds vulnerability. If you go first, if you take a step, just do it and watch what happens. That other person's probably going to lean in because you have to intentionally build the team of people that surround you. Hey, you're going to have to pay attention to who you're bringing into that team. I've built a team around me and it didn't happen by accident. I had to pursue those people. In my prayer time, I was praying for those people. In my Bible reading time, I saw where the best leaders had great people around them. And I knew that's what I needed. And God provided opportunity and I had to go first. And it's working. I have amazing people around me and I'm so thankful for them. You can do the same thing too. And it's worth the time and effort that you're gonna put into it, I promise you. Now, some of you, you already have some friends around you. You have a team built around you. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. The team you have right now may not be the team that you need going into 2021. So we've talked about finding a friend. You might have to fire a friend. First Corinthians 15.33 says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals you might need to fire some people that are currently on your team. You might need to ask yourself some questions of, am I better for being around this person? If this person is one of the five closest people to me, does my average go up or does it go down? Now, don't misunderstand me. Okay, 
when I say fire a friend, that doesn't mean that you go like mafia style and say, you're dead to me. I'm never going to talk to you again. It just means you put some distance between you and them where they don't have as much influence on you anymore. Okay. Because here's the reality. If you keep doing what you're doing, if you keep spending time around the same people, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. If you want change, you have to take action to create that change. And to experience positive change, we have to have positive relationships. And I know it's hard to consider firing a friend. You can still love them from a distance. Here's, a, here's something you're going to have to think about if you're considering pushing somebody off of your team that's closest to you. Okay? Hear me on this. People are not as fragile as you think they are. There's two important points here. Vulnerability breeds vulnerability, and people are not as fragile as you think they are. I guarantee that you can go to somebody that you need to push off the team, and you can have this conversation of, listen, I know we've been friends for a long time, and here's where I'm going in 2021. Here's where I'm trying to get to, and the decisions you make are having a negative impact on me, and I love you. I'm just going to have to put some distance between us because I'm really focused on these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. One of two things is going to happen. The first thing is they might be getting humble really fast with you. They might get honest and say, you're right. I'm really having some struggles. Please don't put distance between us. Can we stay closer together so you can help me overcome these things? And then you have a choice to make whether or not you want to keep them on the team or not. Now, if they're not humble, you know the other end of the spectrum. They're either going to be defensive or aggressive with you and start taking shots at you. And in that moment, you know everything you need to know. If you want to keep them close, or if you need to put some distance between you and them. There's an old African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I hope that in 2021, you want to go far. And if you want to go far and you want to thrive in 2021, you need people. And you're not going to find those people by being passive. You're going to have to take some aggressive action to build a team around you and find those friends. Now, if the thought of building a team from scratch and how to even find these people in the middle of a pandemic while we're all isolated is overwhelming to you, then let us help. Let us help. We have groups all throughout Graceway. We have people that are just like you looking for people just like you. They want to go to the same place that you want to go in 2021. They want to overcome the same challenges you want to overcome. You can go to our website. You can click on our website to find a group. We'll connect you with people. You can call the number on your screen. Talk to a pastor. They'll help get you connected. Send us a Facebook message. Let us help you. That's what we're here to do. Because we know, we know coming in to this upcoming year, you need people. Graceway, 2020 has taught us a lot of lessons. And I hope that you choose to thrive in this upcoming year by investing in your relationship with God and investing in your relationship with other people. Let's pray. God, thank you for today. God, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for taking care of us. God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for making it alive. God, thank you for being active in our lives. Thank you for being willing to listen to us and not just listen to us, but also speak to us. God, I pray for everyone that's watching or listening to this right now as you would bless them. God, as you would speak loudly and clearly to them that you would put them in a position to thrive in the upcoming year. God, that you would strengthen them so they can invest in that relationship with you, so they can invest in that relationship with other people around them. God, thank you for having good plans for us, for loving us. We love you, God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Graceway, I love you. God loves you and he has great plans for you.
I want to thank you so much for your continued financial support. Your generous gifts help fund the many life-changing ministries at Graceway. You can make your gift by going to visitgraceway.org slash give. Our pastors would love an opportunity to pray with you today. If you'd like to pray with the pastor, call or text us at 816-423-2877 and our team will set up a time for you to talk on the phone or video chat. 21 days of prayer begins next Sunday. And although we cannot gather together in person, we have great ways for everyone to participate. Each morning during the 21 days of prayer, we'll post a short message along with a worship playlist. We'll also give you access to an online prayer wall where you can post a prayer request and pray for other people's prayer needs. To learn more or to sign up for a daily text reminder, go to 21days.visitgraceway.org. Before we go, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we have received today. We thank you that your word is yea and amen to the glory of God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you have invited us to know you. You have invited us, O oh Lord, to enjoy you. And we thank you that we are your children and we can call you Abba, Father. Lord, may we go in the strength of the word that we have received today, confident, O oh Lord, that we can call you Father, confident that we can be in a relationship with you, confident, O oh Lord, that we are loved by you. We thank you, O oh Lord, also for the opportunity to connect with other believers, for you have not called us to live isolated life, to, to, but to live life in fellowship. So, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that you begin to tug in our hearts, um, the individuals, the people, and the friends that we ought to uh, call, give a call to um, people that we need to be in relationship with going through the journey of life. Lord, I pray um, that you would help us, O oh Lord, uh, to be a community of faith that love one another, that exemplifies that. For your word says that by this shall all men know that we are your disciples when we love one another. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you have done in us today. To you be all the glory. To you be all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time.